Today we look at finishing the writing process by taking what we discussed yesterday, the brainstorming sessions, the outlines, the keyword outlines, the uh, sentence outlines, and converting that into now uh, what we're gonna call a, an organizational outline so that students choose the appropriate organizational pattern that will later then become uh, their, their paragraph. You'll notice that I'm looking back and forth quite a bit. Each of my students is using Google Docs. So in addition to providing both feedback, I'm also providing individual feedback. Today, guys, we're going to continue our writing process, preparing to write a paragraph. Um, how many of you were able to get more interviews yesterday? Okay, hopefully we all have enough information. Um, for writing this week's paragraph, we need to uh, have good interviews so we have good information because all the information that we're going to include in our paragraph is going to come from the interviews. Okay, so this is not going to be our opinion. This is going to be strictly what other people say. So yesterday we worked on a brainstorming uh, session where you divided and chose three of your participants and you listed key words, right? Key aspects or characteristics that they shared with you about your strengths. Then we created an outline, right, of keywords. We just converted the brainstorming list into an outline, and then we converted our keyword outline to our sentence outline. Today what I want us to do, if you're finished with this, okay, if you're still working on this, then you need to go ahead and complete all of these steps, right? But the next step now is to convert our sentence outline into an organizational outline. Now we have to think about how we want to organize our paragraph. In this particular case, we have basically two options. We have two organizational patterns that we can follow to organize our ideas. The first option is we can start first with the, the first participant. You can choose. So first I'm going to talk about this participant, then I'm going to talk about this participant, then I'm going to talk about this participant. The second option is you can choose by characteristic or trait or adjective, right? So for example, responsibility. Maybe your mother, your father, and your cousin all said that you were responsible, for example. And you see some common uh, information for, for that particular characteristic. You can start first with responsibility in your paragraph. If your mother and your father and your cousin said that you were honest, okay, that might be honesty, might be your second, um, your second option, the second characteristic for, for your paragraph. Whichever option you choose, I would like for you to choose now and create another outline, an organizational outline. Try to bring in the sentences now from this sentence outline into some coherent organizational pattern. This 
will come first. These sentences here are going to represent the order in which you create your paragraph. If you're going to talk, if you want to talk about this first, then you put this first, right? This is going to be your organizational pattern. Remember, here we weren't we weren't worried about organization. We're not. Yesterday we didn't talk about organization at all, so it didn't really matter what how you organized your ideas over here. But now we're ready to organize our ideas. I want to see how you want to organize, and I want you to choose one of these patterns. All right, one of these patterns. If you choose your characteristics, or even your, your uh, participants, whichever option, choose, for example, you could also think about least important, least important to the most important. Think about how you want to organize your ideas. Do you want to talk about the least important characteristic and build? build and build into the end where you talk about the most important or you can talk about the most important first to the least important. Okay, so there's other organizational patterns that you can choose also. But I want you to think very carefully how you want to organize your ideas. Once you've completed the organized, the organizational outline, the next step is now to begin drafting your paragraph. Now notice all these things that we did here. How much time have we been spending just to draft our first paragraph? But this is all very, very important. This is the writing process. Right? This is something that we all do, whether we write it out like we're doing, or whether we're thinking about it. it instead of just going to this first draft and saying, okay, I'm just going to write whatever and see, see, how, see what happens. All right? So when you draft this, Bring it in, use these sentences. Use these exact sentences. The only thing that you need to do now for your final draft is to add transitions, maybe sentence connectors. All right, and we can talk more about that uh, tomorrow. Okay, but for right now, try to think about your outline here, okay? Continue working in Google Classroom. I think the easiest way to do this is to have two outlines. One sentence outline that you got from, from this process, and then a second outline below this outline for your organizational uh, ideas, your, your sentences. And then below this, you'll have your first draft. All right, so in Google Classroom, let me uh, indicate here. CG, Google Classroom. All right, CG. So this is this is what should appear in your Google Classroom document in Google Docs. Your sentence outline, your organizational outline, and your draft, your first draft, and your first draft and, and final draft. Right, this your this process here. Of course, you're going to receive that feedback from me as you are progressing, and then as we work towards our, our final draft. So this is kind of the whole process, right, that we're following this week. And I kind of want you to see this. I want you to experience this, this process. Because writing, it's not like everybody just sits down and starts to write. No, we have, everybody has to think about it. Sometimes we write outlines. Uh, some of you asked, I don't know if it was this class or the other class, somebody asked me, can I do a schematic map, like a mind map, instead of an outline? You know, like a little spider map like this. Something like that. That's fine. All right. If this works for you, that's fine. If you want to do an outline, we can do an outline. Okay. So the main idea is to organize our ideas, to have a plan, to know exactly how we're going to organize our ideas. And if you can do this, you're going to have a better final draft, a first draft, and a final draft. And actually, it makes this process a lot easier because you already have most of it right here. If you have these really well constructed, then you can just move those in here to your first draft. Okay. Any questions about any of the process here that we've uh, been working with uh, yesterday and today uh, with regard to this week's program?
At this point, we should have enough information. I hope everyone now has enough information from, from your interviews, a lot of details. It's not enough to say, my mom thinks I'm responsible. Okay, when are you responsible? Are you more responsible with certain groups of people or certain times? When were you responsible? So hopefully in your interviews, you've got that information, that you can get that detail. And I hope that in your interviews, you were curious about what they would say. These are people that are special in your life that you know well. So ask them questions maybe that they've never shared with you that you're curious about that you can bring into this paragraph. That's going to make a better paragraph. Something that you can think, oh, wow, I didn't think my, my cousin thought I was that honest during that particular time or something like that. Something that surprises you, bring that into your, to your paragraph. Make this a very personal uh, you know, text. But remember that the entire text should come from your interviews. This is not what you think about your strength. This is not you talking about your strengths. This is strictly about what other people say your strengths are. All right, so we'll continue here in class. So I'll go ahead and continue working on wherever you are in the process. I'll continue looking in your Google Docs, giving you feedback. If you want me to look at something, uh, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, provide you feedback uh, personally. And if there's an issue with connectivity, feel free to write it out in your notebook. But I would only ask that later today if you can upload to Google Classroom because I like to go in and see how you're uh, progressing. Okie dokie. All right. If anybody has any questions about any part of this process, or why we're doing certain parts of this process, please ask. The keywords, it's actually, technically, it's the keywords from your brainstorming session. Now, your brainstorming session, remember when we turned, our, we had our piece of paper and we created our lists per participant? Those words came from the interviews. So, yes, indirectly they come from the interviews, but first the idea is to come up with a brainstorming, just a list of, okay, this is my mom, she said this, my cousin said this, my best friend said this, and coming up with the keywords. And then here, we just convert this to the outline. But the keywords might be something like responsibility, honesty, right? But yes, so indirectly they do come from uh, the interviews. Okay, so what I would do here is I would I would convert what you're showing me is your brainstorming. So I would convert it to your outline, and then convert this the keywords to these sentences. Okay, and you might on the brainstorming there you don't have to include all the words here. Include the main words that you want to include in your paragraph. So it's possible that you don't use all of the brainstorming words here. Okay. But try to follow this process. This is the first step. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And at your stage, I would create your pet, your keywords uh, outline, and then convert your keyword outline to sentence outlines. So you're going to use the same keywords here, but now you're going to create a subject, a verb, preposition, phrase, simple sentence, kind of sentence. And then when you convert this, and when you finish with this process, then you organize and use the same sentences here, but organize them now based on how you want to organize your paragraph, thinking about these options. Do you want to organize by participant or by characteristic? Um, in your paragraph? Um, Yes, yes, you can, yeah, you can include the, the example of it, maybe of a situation. Um, in fact, I'm trying to think, is it just one situation, like you want to talk about the whole situation? It depends. If you, one option, one option is that you talk about one uh, situation and all of your characteristics fall into that one situation. That's just one option. 
Pero si tú dices, no, son, no sé, dos o tres uh, situaciones, and you can organize your, your ideas by situation. Ese es otro ejemplo. Ese es otro como tercer opción. If you want to talk about one situation, then in your topic sentence, you present that idea as your topic sentence. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Perdón, en otra opción es, you can choose this option, but talk about that experience within each option. This is otra manera. Mm -hmm. Gabby looks good. Um, just a couple of observations. See if there's another way that you can express this idea, I am constant. Try to say the same thing, but see if there's another verb that better describes uh, what it is that you want to say. Maybe use a thesaurus, check your thesaurus and dictionary.com. Uh-huh, to look for a sentence. How do you want to organize your ideas, Gary? Do you want to organize by participant, or do you want to organize by characteristic? Uh -huh. First, my mom said this, and then this. Yeah, tiene que tratar de legar todo, los tres, pero esa es una opción, puede ser por persona, por participante. The other is, for example, you can say, my mom and my sister say that I'm responsible when I do this and this and this. My cousin, my aunt, my mom say that I am honest when I do this. Estás como a juntar los participantes, pero basado en qué? En las características. Entonces ahora ya vas a organizar por características. Puede ser primero, responsabilidad, y luego, no sé, honestidad, no sé. The topic sentence, I want us to work backwards. So the first decision you need to make is which pattern do you want to follow. So depending on the pattern that you choose, you already have this information. Ask yourself, what's the general idea of what you have here? All right, so you're probably going to have keywords like strength, my personal strength, right? But depending on what you have here is what's going to depend on what, what you have here. We're going to actually work backwards. But this has to be the general idea that really covers all, all of this information. So it's really going to depend. All of you are going to have different topic sentences. There's not going to be one, one best way for all of you to do the same, the same topic sentence. Right? So, uh, Jenny was talking about an event, and maybe there's something in that event that captures the whole idea about her characteristics. She could mention something about that event or something that is related to that, depending on what she wants to say. So try to work backwards. Try to first think about the organizational pattern, and then say, okay, what, is, what am I saying here about, about me? And it's going to have something to do, obviously, with your personal strengths, but it's going to, I want you to try to come up with a topic sentence in each of your particular cases, because they're going to be slightly different. In Google Classroom or Google Docs, this outline, and your first draft. So we have two outlines here. Teacher, yes. How many sentences do you want from outline? 
in the number of four. <laughs> we need to have five to eight sentences for the final paragraph. So I'm not looking at how many sentences you have here. Okay, so you might have more, you might have less, but your first draft you need to have five to eight. That includes the topic sentence, all the detailed sentences, and your summarizing sentence. So, yeah, I'm more concerned about the number of sentences here. Because you could have one sentence here that you decide later in the first draft to convert into two sentences. Right? Or you could combine the sentences. If you have, I don't know, eight or nine, ten sentences, you have a lot of sentences here, you could convert and merge some of these sentences into your final draft. So it depends on how you want to work, how you want what makes most sense for you. Bullet point here, you got your name. <laughs> <laughs> so try to use like these bullet points and then you have a bullet point here, bullet point here. So when you have your sentence outlined, all right, and you've completed this, then you can use these sentences but now present them in some sort of logical order based on the organization of patterns. So it can be the same yeah. sentences, but now we're focusing on the organization. So here it doesn't matter how they're, they're organized. Yep. Try to create this uh -huh. this outline first uh, from what you have here, mm -hmm. right. and then um, and then use these sentences because here we're still focusing per person. Like, okay, what did this person say? So, no estamos pensando tanto en la organización en este papel. So it says. Pero ya cuando tienes estas frases completas con por personas, con los detalles, ahora ya puedes pensar, ok, ¿cómo quiero organizar toda esta información? Pensando en este, por persona o por característica. Y abrazado en este, ahora ya, esta es mi primera frase, segunda y tercera, sí. Y ya desde ahí va a ser más, más fácil para la receta. Tal vez tienes que agregar un poco de textos a este para que hay un poco de todo eso, pero es la idea. No sé cómo prefiero trabajar en Google Classroom para que ustedes también tienen mis comentarios ahí. Para que yo luego también. ¿verdad? Pero sí, vas bien, vas bien. Vas, vas muy bien. Y tu e-portfolio looks a lot better. Looks good. Okay, tienes tu outline? Uh, pues. Quiero ver este primer. No, no es así como quiero este. Mire, quiero dar feedback primero a este. Es por eso estamos en. Vamos a hacer un proceso. Es el primer paso, sí. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Quiero ver este primero. Luego este. Luego este. No queremos estar brincando aquí. Quiero, uh, I want to, for us to experience the process of writing. ¿Qué brainstorming? But it's a different format. <laughs> Remember yesterday that we did our, our brainstorming like this horizontally. And then we just converted it into the outline. It's basically the same information, but... Tal vez tienes algo de información aquí que dices luego, no, no voy a meter aquí. Puede ser igual o no, dependiendo. Pero ahora ese es como un esquema. 